Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to show you how you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest changes that are happening in the .NET world. If you are one of those engineers that are super curious about, you know, the cutting edge, bleeding edge, you know, changes that are happening, you know, before things get actually released and finalized, you're the alpha guy. Like, you know, in the alpha stage, you know, you want to basically, you know, see the changes in real time and learn from them and form a thought about them before they actually get released. This video is definitely for you. This video today is mainly about allowing you to see how you can uh, get a, an alpha release of .NET 8 and play around with C Sharp 12. Uh, Microsoft have recently announced the final release of uh, the standard support version, which is .NET 7 with C Sharp 11. Amazing stuff happening in there. But if you've got bored of all the features and you want to learn about what's coming, this video is definitely for you. So let's just get started. You know, where do you even get .NET 8 from, right? Like, you know, you know that there is a, 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 a .NET 7. If you go into, let's go here to the screen. If you say download .NET like this, you know, you're going to go into this page and, you know, the only options that you see is .NET 8, .NET 6, right? Okay, you want to, you know, you want to bring the nightly builds. You want to bring, bring the alpha release. Well, this is, this is not the right place for that. If you want to go there, you want to go to .NET installer on GitHub, which is where uh, the .NET team, uh, ASP.NET, you know, all, all these folks, all this org, the dev dev, like we call them, you know, uh, they basically work on uh, releasing, you know, alpha releases. So if you go to github.com slash .NET slash installer, it'll basically show, and don't worry, you know, about kind of running and taking notes and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to write all the notes for you down there. You can also always pause the video and kind of, you know, uh, grab the information you need. So in here, you want to basically download the .NET 8, right? This is the uh, HDK that you're going to download. Of course, I downloaded it and installed it. So how do you uh, how do you know what you have is the right thing? If you go to the CMD, you know, and just really quick, can I zoom in in this one? Yeah, there you go. You can do .NET dash dash uh, version, and it'll show you that you're running .NET 8. Okay, if you want to know all the versions that you're running in here, so you can go sdk.list uh, or list sdk, I think. Yeah, list sdk or sdks. There you go, list sdks. You know, I don't use the command so often, so you know, I'm, I might miss a thing or two, or two, but that that for one that shows you how old I am. You know, I've been kind of tracking this since the beginning, but uh, you can see here all the official releases and all the version. You can keep this handy, you know, because when you are working with multiple projects that are targeting different versions, this will be come very very handy because if you just go do .NET version like this you don't know whether you can actually support .NET 3, .NET 5, .NET 6 or 7 or, or what are you doing exactly. You can also see the preview versions in here and stuff like that. Okay so we got that out of the way. The second thing you want to do uh, I highly recommend you play around with the preview version of uh, Visual Studio. The version that I have in here let me show you that in help, if you go to About Microsoft Visual Studio, I have the 17.5 Preview 2.0. If you don't get the 2.0, you won't be able to play with uh, C Sharp 12. So this is this part is super important. Make sure you get that. Where do you get that from? Uh, if you go to uh, Visual Studio Preview, you should be able to get a bunch of versions for Visual Studio. There's the Enterprise Edition, the Professional Edition. Preview versions, meaning the ones that are not released yet, like this is not publicly, well, it's publicly available, but it's not for production. So just be aware that when you're playing with something like this, it's not meant to go to production and be supported. And if something breaks, you know, .NET team will tell you, well, we told you this is a preview. You know, we'll try to help you as much as we can, but, you know, this is this is not the version that you want to use for your production work. All right. Uh, let's let's play with the code, right? So I'm going to go to File and Create Project. As soon as you download and install .NET 8, you're going to see new stuff going on here. What is this new stuff? This is Microsoft Test Playwright, you know, an in-unit Playwright. I didn't see 
uh, the X unit playwright. Playwright is basically an amazing framework. We talked about this on this channel. You know, go look it up. Uh, we talked to Lope. Uh, she showed us how we can use uh, Playwright to do to write C sharp code to test end to end. Beautiful for UI applications. You know, Blazor applications super important for you to kind of validate uh, your UI end to end. But uh, that's not the topic of this. I want to go and create a quick console application. So we're gonna call it .NET. 8 demo like this and you're gonna see here the drop down it's showing .NET 8 great let's go ahead and create that here we go and then you know here's here's the last and most important piece before we start actually writing some code uh, in in the dis, in the configuration of your project you're gonna see a bunch of things happening in here right of course my my personal preference is that I want to see you know, I, I don't care about nullable stuff or implicit usings, uh, so that's just my preference. But you gotta go and add in language support in here, and you're gonna say preview. So this is super important for you to kind of get the C sharp. This will be base. This is basically targeting C sharp 12 at this point in time, because you're basically looking for the preview release after the final release. Final release is C sharp 11. Preview release is C sharp uh, 12. Okay, let's pull in some. Uh, references in here. Okay, in order for me to sh show you how this works, I'm going to create another quick project in here, but that project is going to be .NET 7, right? So this is dot, dot .7 demo. And instead of uh, the preview, I'm going to pick up the standard edition, and we have, we have this guy. Okay, watch this. In C Sharp 12, they released or the alpha release now supports something called uh, giving default values for uh, input parameters for lambda functions right so if i go here and say i have an action and this action takes a string and i don't know you know uh, print student name right and this action basically is a lambda that takes a name in here and it's just going to print the name thanks to the you know copilot that's doing all the work you can see in here that it's it's basically kind of it's just a simple funk basically an action and it just basically runs and it prints things you know the problem here is if i want to go here and say you know i want to provide a default value right like like not available not of or na let's just say na like this this guy will freak out why because it's a new feature in c sharp uh, uh, 12 that is not available yet right uh, it's not supported you know in this system so now if I jump back into the other project I'm just gonna copy this code and take it up in here and jump back into this project in here it'll be like yeah that's totally cool you know I can support you know adding you know uh, uh, default values for your parameters and stuff like that. Someone might say, Hassan, where did you where did you come up with that? How do you know about this feature that it's happening? Ah, that's a great question. If you go into, you know, the .NET team in here, right, and if you look at Roslyn, for instance, right, you're gonna go and, and find in something here called milestones, right? These milestones basically allows you to go and say, well, wait a second, these are my milestones. Here's the milestones for 17.3, that's for Visual Studio. This is C-sharp 12 right here. And if you go into C-sharp 12, you're going to see the closed ones. And in the closed ones, you're going to start going and saying, okay, infer, infer delegate type for method group should include any default parameter values. And I think you can see here, aha, there it is. It's basically saying, give me some default parameter values. You got to keep up with the .NET team because that's a super active team, very smart people working around the clock. It takes a lot of work, literally a village, to kind of bring something uh, at the quality that you see with Visual Studio, C Sharp, and .NET and all that kind of stuff. So you got to keep up with, you got to understand the language, you're going to kind of tap into the right channels to know how you can uh, uh, learn about this new stuff because you're not going to see these stuff in documentation you're not going to see any youtube videos at this point in time you're not going to see any youtube videos out there that talks about .NET 8 and c sharp 12 right because this is still in the works it's an alpha release it's uh, what what uh, people call a bleeding edge right it's it's not ready yet for for consumption uh, two important things i have to uh, kind of uh, have you pay attention to 
this is preview we're playing around so this is not something you want to take today and go use it in production systems be very careful with that when you're playing with this know that this is just you know you're still learning kind of getting yourself acclimated and you're playing around with a new language and new technology for curiosity and learning which is what something that every software engineer out there needs to have you need to have that to stay recent to stay relevant and on the topic you know if you heard people talk about you know ai and chat gpt and open ai and stuff like that it's probably a good idea for you to start kind of thinking about that and looking into that because before you know it you know a lot of the things that we're doing moving data around is not going to be engineering anymore it's going to be something you know that we think of the same way we think about you know i don't know you're just generating a random text or generating a GUID or something like that so you probably want to tap into these channels if you want to stay relevant and if you want to continue to push the wheel of innovation uh, forward. Uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time any longer. Uh, I hope you find this a little bit interesting and useful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you find this useful. Take care. See you in another video.